Hey guys, so today I am going to take you through a simple dungeon run here. This is a run of the Ravenous Gorge, which is a three person dungeon similar to the Channel Works. Um, and it's pretty straightforward as to what you need to do each time you run through it. Um, I've actually ran through it probably about four or five times now, mostly because I've been trying to get a um, a run through of the dungeon that I could actually explain to you guys how it works before the people that I'm paired with actually just completely destroy the boss um, because I've been going through with some people who had some uh, I don't want to say diamond laurels and gold laurels so they're actually really really strong and they were going through this dungeon, I guess just to do like experience and just to get the run-throughs for achievements. Um, so they definitely did not um, help me out there while I was trying to record the game. And what you actually need to do for this dungeon. But I finally have got a pretty good team here. So this guy here is your first boss that you will be faced up against. Uh, as you can see, he's gonna go to either either one of three places. He's gonna go to the trees, or he's gonna go to the flowers, or he's going to go to uh, the rocks, the lamb over there, or whatever. And if he manages to get over there before you're able to attack him enough, you'll get a buff off of that. So you want to basically try to hurt him enough so that he doesn't actually get over to them before you're able to, um, before he's able to get that buff. So unfortunately he got it whenever we, uh, whenever he went up that tree there. I wasn't in time to actually, uh, attack him enough so that he would not get the buff. I believe it's a buff that you get. No, I'm not for sure. Um, I didn't look up any of the mechanics for this dungeon. I've done it so many times. I just kind of learned as I went through. So it wasn't anything that I had to try to learn how to do myself. It was just something that I learned by going through. But I know that a lot of people like to have the dungeon run through. They do help them out quite a bit. Um, and I know they work for me as well. I tend to uh, tend to use them sometimes, not a lot, but I sometimes use them. And they do help me, even if they're not explaining to me what you do in the dungeon, and they're just going through and running it with music behind it. I still find it helpful uh, because you can definitely see what you're doing wrong or what you need to do for that dungeon run so that you know you know what you need to do next time you go in there because a lot of times if you don't know what you're doing um, they will kick you out of a dungeon so you just need to be careful with that also we have to go up here um, and wait well usually you would go up here and wait you don't have to anymore a lot of people tend to know what to do, but there is a certain monkey that you have to attack down here. And if you attack him, um, then he will he will go away and the, the big gorilla will come back faster. You want to basically attack the ones that are saying squeak, squeak. I know everyone over there is kind of not doing anything. Um, because you can, because if you do hit the wrong ones, like you can see there, I will lose HP. Um, but if you hit the ones that just say squeak squeak, then you'll he'll go on to the next one. Or you could just stand around and not do anything. That would actually be something that a lot of people do as well. Then you'd avoid it and you don't have to worry about losing the HP. I'm actually going to let my cat in while we're waiting on the door. happens to me. Always happens. Whenever 
I'm doing a recording or something, she's always wanting to come in and always at the very worst time messing me up when I'm trying to do something. Oh, and now she's going to walk across the screen as well because I can't even actually see what I'm doing, so I'm probably going to miss out on this one as well and he's going to get another buff from the lambs. Looks like it. So he has power now in his belly and he's going to be buffed even more, which is amazing. Nice. Very nice. That's exactly what we needed right now. Whatever. It's fine. I'm just going to try to keep attacking him because obviously that's what I need to do. I'm trying to, to figure out here, is our healer actually still here? I'm kind of wondering if our healer is actually still here. Probably got tired of us not being able to like one shot this thing like they've been doing because I think this healer was actually in here with the person that was here uh, with me last time that ran through and they went through the dungeon super quick and were able to finish it in like two seconds but you know we're not the same gear so we are going to take a little bit longer to do it which for me that's fine because I'm running through this as a dungeon run through so I obviously am going to need to be able to tell you guys about what you need to look out for so you probably could get the gist of it without me having to explain it to you. Um, because clearly I'm terrible at explaining things. Because I didn't look up the mechanics myself, so you know, I'm just kind of... I'm here, basically. What's going on? I'm here. And I'm running through the dungeon for you guys. So, I'm going to actually... well, I can't actually do that. I was going to kick out the healer because they basically left on us. Um, but I don't have any time for that. And besides, like I said before, this dungeon is pretty simple. There's not much that you have to look out for. Um, so this is the second boss of the dungeon. This is the uh, dragon looking thing. I don't even know what to call this guy. But he's pretty simple as well. He has a front swiping attack for the tank and he has a back swiping attack for the DPS classes. So make sure you do watch out for that as well. Uh, he also has his, his spraying attack and he has this little mechanic here where if it tells you to take cover behind a rock, you want to definitely do that because he's going to come charging at you and knock himself out through the rock. Um, if he actually hits you, it can do major damage and could actually knock you out and kill you. So you just want to look out for that. When it says to take cover behind a rock, take cover behind a rock and uh, it'll get you what you need. That's pretty much it for him on, in terms of his mechanics. He will do that little fiery thing, breath or whatever it's called. And he would do the swipes and the uh, the claws, whatever them things are called, that he has. And that's pretty much it. And then he will ask you to take cover behind the rocks. Make sure to do that as well. It's very simple, which is what I've been saying like quite a bit, which is probably why you guys are probably annoyed with me since I'm kind of repeating myself a lot. Which is why I'm kind of thinking that I want to actually do a lot of these with just some music over it. Like I've seen, I've seen a bunch of them do that. Actually, uh, they've done a lot of dungeon run throughs with just the. Uh, oh, I died. Okay, with just the music over it and no commentary, which is fine with me. I thought about doing that as well. Uh, a lot of my run things I've done so far though have been um, with commentary on them though. So that's why I decided to do it with commentary. I thought it would actually be more appropriate. That way I could kind of like explain things. Um, but if you don't know what you're doing, then obviously it's going to be hard to explain it. 
it's not really that difficult. It's not like some of the big dungeons. This is one of those uh, dungeons that's pretty simple. So I don't technically have to explain a lot. I know on the first boss I didn't actually explain too much of anything. It's it's pretty straightforward. He will go to a certain spot. You want to make sure you attack him with your whole team before he gets to that spot. So that he can... Uh, he will fall down and he won't get that big huge buff or whatever it is that he's getting when he goes up there. And then he'll also throw out some orbs uh, for the DPSs, so you have to watch out for that. And he also will throw like this tantrum thing and there will be some AoE spots on the floor that you're going to have to avoid. We didn't see any of those in our run, I don't think, probably because we were able to uh, take him out in time before he actually managed to to die. So that was good. Uh, there's also some plants here on the ground as well. You can attack the plants if you want to. Um, normally if you're able to defeat the boss before your um, before this actually happens, you won't really have to worry about these plants. They kind of spawn on the ground. Um, and you can attack them. That way you don't have to uh, worry about getting hit by them because they can do some damage to you if you don't do anything about them. But they're real simple to take out. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, like I said, 50 bazillion times. So definitely remember, it's pretty straightforward. And we've almost got the guy taken down here. And then we will move on to our last boss, and that will be it for this dungeon. Yes, there are only three bosses, so it's definitely not that difficult. And it's a quick run through, and it's actually a quick queue as well. That's a big thing for people who actually queue for the dungeon. Um, it's a quick queue, so you will definitely not have to wait too long on that. I think my maximum wait time on this dungeon was usually around two minutes to three minutes. If even that, sometimes it was right away. I know these past few runs that I've done of it, I think have been right away. So it hasn't been um, as bad as it was before, which I'm actually happy. It's, uh, it's, like I said earlier, it's about, it's kind of like channel work. So since you're only looking for three people, it's not going to take you as long to get through the dungeon. Which I'm very happy about. And you do get a few things that can help you with gear um, as well. So basically, you want to pick those up because you can use them. Uh, for lower tier gear, it's very helpful. So it's, it's it's kind of a... I forgot what number it is. I think it's a 413 dungeon, so it's pretty low. They could obviously change all this in the future. And it could be a higher level dungeon. They tend to change things around quite a bit, if you haven't noticed. If you're a Terra player, you know that they change things around quite a bit. So it could definitely vary. There could be like a hard mode of the Ravenous Gorge here soon. Or there could be um, a hard mode of Calvin's Dreadnought. Or there could be just different dungeons that we've run through before can be different. So it's definitely something that um, is pretty pretty useful to look for whenever you're going into your dungeons and you're looking out for which one you want to do next. Because they do tend to change them a lot so if you do keep up with the game then you'll know exactly what to do. But if they don't change it, then it will stay a three-person dungeon, and it'll be pretty simple. So that's that's the gist of it, basically, what I'm trying to say. Although I'm seeming like I'm sounding a bit, um, like you have no idea what I'm talking about. I feel like I'm talking in circles, basically, is what I'm saying. Because I'm repeating myself a lot. And doing a lot of things that, well, you probably wouldn't do in this dungeon, like 
let a team member go offline so that it takes you that much longer to actually uh, complete the dungeon. Uh, but this boss here, same thing as the other two. He's got his mechanics that he does. He's gonna cry out and when he does that he's gonna make one of his big huge eggs grow bigger. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over and you're going to want to attack the egg together and get rid of the egg because it's kind of like the first boss where if he reaches the egg before you're able to take it out then you're going to run into um you're going to run into some problems because he's going to get like a buff or something if you don't be careful so make sure to take out that egg real quick like you don't have to worry about that. He also has a diving move, um, move that he will do on certain people and like right now he's going to dive on me so I'm gonna stay out of his way and dodge him as much as possible. I'm actually going to heal myself as well because we have a priest and a sorcerer but the priest isn't keeping me healed up like I want to be so lucky for me being a brawler I can heal myself. And I should probably use this. Yeah, there we go. That should help me out a bit until the priest can heal me up. It would be nice if our character that we act- or not our character, but our teammate didn't go offline. Then we wouldn't have to worry about it at all. And this dungeon would have been run through a lot quicker. That's another thing that I didn't mention before though, is if you get a- dungeon run of this dungeon with all DPS classes. It's going to be a lot quicker than if you're running through it with a priest or a mystic because they are healing classes and they're not going to help you out as much as it would if you went through with a um, with a DPS class only run. It is nice though to have the healers um, especially for if you are running with people who don't know what they're doing or they don't have the right gear, it's good to have a healing member to be able to heal you up so that you don't have to worry about dying like I did, fortunately, on the second boss. But then you also don't have to worry about um, your MP getting low or anything like that and you're pretty set for the dungeon, but it will take a lot longer. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. You can go through the dungeon without a healer and you can run through it a lot quicker but you will have to be responsible for healing yourself up you're also you can also run it with a healer and then you won't have to worry about it at all and you can uh, you can get through with a healer and then you'll have someone to heal you up so either way it kind of all depends on if you Actually, I think we might just see it right now. What happens when they reach the egg? Oh, nope, I managed to kill the egg. Okay. Um, my gunner friend over there forgot about the egg, I think. And we managed to just barely get rid of the egg. Uh, hello, healer. Are you going to heal me? That's what happens with those, those computer healers. They never know what they're doing. Also... You did see it though, of course, but in the beginning of the dungeon, you can actually pick two of those crystals. There's three crystals, you can pick two, and they can help you out with this last dungeon here, or this last boss here. Obviously, as you could see, we didn't have a healer, so I picked a healer and then I picked another DPS, a sorcerer, to run through with us because the more the merrier, basically. And uh, the sorcerer will help us with doing more damage, and then the healer will help us out with healing us. Well, it's supposed to help us out with healing us, but you can see how that's going. Uh, you can also pick a tank as well. But since I am a tanking class, I decided not to choose the tank, because there's no need for it. But you want to definitely pick the tank if you come in with only DPS classes, and you're not able to have a tank that can help you out that he's he's not doing this and like flying all over the place um, he's gonna also you just saw that there but he can also call up a storm 
as well and you want to get into those blue orb areas um, so that he can you want to get into the areas where the blue circles are so that the storm doesn't hit you uh, because the storm will definitely hurt if it hits you um, if it doesn't kill you actually so you want to be careful with that as well uh, but we're pretty much wrapping up this dungeon here it's fairly straightforward, like I've said a million bajillion times. Aren't you so happy that I keep saying that? How many of you have started a drinking game and however many times I say straightforward or easy or clearly a dungeon that you can do pretty simple, you've taken a drink and you're drunk by now. I don't know, but it would be pretty fun to do considering how many times I've said it. Said what, you might add? Oh, <laughs> straightforward. Yeah, there's another one for you. But that is going to do it for the dungeon run of the Ravenous Gorge. Um, it is free boss dungeon and you can get some cool items if you manage to make it through. You can get these enchanting boxes where you can get yourself some crafting material to help craft your gear. You also have a chance of getting a crystal box as well and some Archdemon Catalyst as well as some gold or silver talents. So it's definitely good for those beginning players to run through. If you want to run through it and get yourself some gear. You can you also get experience for doing it too. You get your um your credits. Obviously I've done all of mine for today, so I don't get anything too extra anymore. Uh, but you can also get some EP points from running through it as well, Vanguard credits, lots of different stuff for running through it. So that is going to be it for this one. I will go ahead and just say right now, if I do any other dungeon run throughs, I'm probably going to do some with no commentary because I'm doing a lot of quests right now and I have some different quests than what was previously available when I did my archer run throughs of the quest. So I thought I would do some different dungeon run throughs while I'm doing stuff today and just kind of play through the game because that's what I've been doing since I've gotten my brawler up to level 65 is just playing through the game and playing through the dungeons and this is what the end game is all about dungeon running unless you're doing pvp but that's a whole other story anyway I've talked your head off enough and I've basically taken up a bunch of time here so I'm gonna go ahead and end it off and I will see you guys in the next video.